point. We do not know where they are, but we intend to give it our best effort to help these families find closure. Maryland State Police Superintendent Roland Butler, a container ship slammed into the bridge after losing power. The judge in former President Trump's criminal case in New York issues a gag order barring him from publicly commenting on witnesses, prosecutors, court staff, and jurors. Trump faces 34 charges falsifying business records to conceal hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The defense team has argued any gag order would trample Trump's free speech rights. City Cotton in New York. One winning ticket is sold in New Jersey for a $1 billion Mega Millions lottery jackpot, winning numbers 7, 11, 22, 29, 38, and the Mega Ball 4. America's listening to Fox News. WSME. Live and local. Real talk starts now. And uh, right now is Wednesday. Welcome to Live and Local. Real talk. Freedom 97.1, 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Also known as What's That Show? Good morning. I'm Rayford Brown. I'm Kelly Knapp. And I'm Lee Barrows. What you laughing? She's laughing at you. I'm just No, she's not. She knows what's uh, behind that. What's that show? <laughs> She'll tell you during the break. Okay. So anyway, uh, a lot going on. And uh, first of all, let's get a, a, a report, a live update on uh, who the new chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party. Yes, and we had a new chairman elected last night, mm-hmm. Jason Simmons. He is the current executive director of the Republican Party, but now has been elected as the new chairman. Hmm. Well, congratulations to Jason. Yes, congratulations, so, uh, Jason. We'll be hearing from him. Yeah, we'll get in the air with these days. And uh, what's he going to do for us? I mean, did he get some kind of a speech up there to say, "Hey, what, what, not us for you, for y'all"? What's he going to do for the Republican Party? He's going to uh, try to bring the party together. And I would suggest super glue. <laughs> elect Republicans and make lots of money. <laughs> He's going to make lots of money. He's going to bring a lot of money oh, to, the to the party to help okay. elect Republicans and put them into office. Uh, so, so the bottom line is yeah. to get rid of the Democrats and bring the Republicans in. Well, for the wait, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm tired. Okay, it was a long drive home last night, but yeah, uh, but I um, got to talk to Mike quietly last night. Mm-hmm. You know, he is now the national chairman of the Republican yeah. Party, and I got thinking. Um, I was there when he took his speech for coming into the party as chairman. And I was there last night when he made his exit speech. You leaving watch him come and go. I watched him come and go. There yeah. you go. It was a packed house last night. Some of our electeds were there. Well, I want, yeah, a couple of our elected officials From were there. Yes. Is that Senator right? Lazar was there. Okay, good. And um, Bill Lanier with the Board of Education. Mm-hmm. And... That was it. So we were his elected. Two elected and, and, and one uh, former chair of the Onslow Republican Party. Yeah. You. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. I well, didn't think about me. We were represented anyway. Yeah, we were. Onslow well, was well represented. Onslow was well represented. Yes, it was. Uh, but uh, it's kind of strange where they held this thing, uh, on a, especially on a, what, a Tuesday state. night? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a work day? A school day? I kind of think shenanigans played into that, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> uh-huh. So why would they, I it mean, was, they held it close to Raleigh, right? With an easy driving distance of the Raleigh? Yes, the Raleigh area, yes. It was in Selma, North Carolina. Uh-huh. If you've ever been there. No. I, I, I only <laughs> saw a couple streets because you come right off of 70 to the little, well, the, the place that we had it. I could have swore I heard banjos when I got out of my truck. It was like in the boonies. <laughs> but it was, a, it, was, it was a building that was in Kenansville yeah. at the stadium there. And um, and it was a nice place, but it was like long hours. We didn't get done till after almost ten thirty. We started at seven. We had to be there check in between six and seven. Mm-hmm. So we were hungry. Mm-hmm. We were testy. <laughs> we mm-hmm. were thirsty. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of us, I had it instead of taking a left, I took a right because I saw fast food restaurants. After you, after when you left? Yes, I so was you, starving. So you ate on your way home? Yes. I only ate half of it, though, because yeah, I'm just not much of a fast food eater. Yeah, me either. But I had to have something. Fast. Fast. <laughs> no, the line was long. Yeah. The burger was okay. I didn't eat all of it. But um, then that long ride home, 
Yeah. A lot of construction on um, Interstate on, on 70. A lot of construction. and uh, Construction it, everywhere I want to go. Every road that really I want to drive nice. It was really nice, though, because I made the drive fast, mm -hmm. and I stayed the speed limit. At least. Speed a little, lose a lot. That's all I kept thinking the whole way <laughs> and the way back. So. Okay. Yeah, so wonder the uh, governor didn't have the whole highway patrol out there waiting for y'all. Yeah, well, there was no alcohol involved. No not, reason not for, for it. Not for alcohol, <laughs> but for speeding. Yeah, but um, it might have been, I, I don't know. But I tell you, what was weird is when I came out of the place, you actually had to go 95 <clears throat> south to get back to 70 east. And I was like, with all this new construction, I was worried. But mm -hmm. GPS did me right. No, that's good. Yes. <laughs> Well, the big story for the past 24 hours, we yes. started yesterday morning, is the remains the collapse of a major bridge in Baltimore with people in coastal towns across the country thinking and out loud these days. Yes. If you got and you got boats, it can happen mm -hmm. here or there, wherever. Now, we live in a coastal area, southeastern North Carolina. How many bridges do we have to cross every day? A bunch. If you go anywhere, right. you're going to be crossing bridges. Um, and on those major waterways, let's just take Emerald Isle Bridge. Let's take the Swansboro Bridges. Let's take our bypass bridge. Bypass bridge. Boats coming up river that we... No, but the size still, of something could happen. Yeah. Um, there's the other bridge, the new bridge, which is now the older bridge. So we we got all we got all sorts of bridges around here. Uh, North Topsail, right. you got big barges that could create that kind of damage. I believe that. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got bridges that break away bar, bar, barges that can break away, and they mm -hmm. have in a lot of locations. They can break away and go everywhere. You never know. I believe that too. And yeah. once they're let's just take um, that the White Oak Bridge across the White Oak River there in Swansboro. We're talking mm -hmm. yesterday. I was talking right. with Mike yesterday about that. Uh, barges come and make that hard turn. If they're not under control and with the currents running like they do quite mm -hmm. often. Yeah. All it does is take a rope to break and that's it. A mm -hmm. line to call up on boats. But anyway. Yeah. You could destroy a lot of stuff. I agree with that. There's a lot of speculation on this accident, yeah. on, on what occurred. And um, I've heard a lot of things. I'm anxious to hear what their findings well, are. Well, some of the latest findings is that it was fuel-related problems with the boat, with the ship. So almost a thousand-foot ship, mm -hmm. nine hundred some meters long, but it had a uh, apparently lost power. An electrical issue somewhere down the line, which caused everything else. I understand lights were blinking. They went out on the ship, and as it was headed for the bridge, if you want to call any luck here, whoever on on the ship did put a radio call out of some sort. Don't know the radio ship radios run, run off batteries, but they're charged all the time. Yes. But even if the electricity goes out, the batteries are still up as far as, as the radio communications are concerned. And it radio. Unfortunately, there were eight workers on the bridge right. working on potholes and stuff. I I have heard nothing about the cars that were on the bridge except that they were in the, or now underwater in about 50 feet of water. Uh, nothing about people in the cars, but there are six of the eight crew uh, uh, workers that were on the bridge are still missing. Coast Guard has... Uh, discontinued search. Yeah, they it's just no longer a rescue mission. It's a recovery mission at best. And uh, two of those managed to be plucked from the 47 degree water. Whew. That's cold. <clears throat> They're lucky. Uh, one was treated and released. The other is in the hospital. He's okay now, but he was in pretty bad shape when they brought him in. Uh, the other six are missing. I, you know, I, I'm going to do something I try not to do. I assume that the cars, since they're not talking a lot about those cars being occupied, belong to those those workers on the bridge. Because this was like at what, like 1.30 in the morning, in the morning or morning. something? Right. Yeah. But they shut the bridge down for oncoming traffic right. quickly, which was good. Which was good. Mm -hmm. um, I, You know, that could have been a much worse disaster than it already is. I agree. 
Mm -hmm. so. A lot of speculation. I know they were talking last night whether it's proven or not. I don't know, like a speculation, but they said that it, indications show that they failed to drop their anchors, which is probably one of the first things they should have done. Uh, yeah, uh, once they lost power, but there are com there are reports. I saw that yesterday. I don't know how true any of this is right. yet. There are still reports that uh, the ship power dropped. They didn't drop anchors, but then the power came back on. <clears throat> well, do you need the power to drop the anchors? I don't know, but don't they have if, a safety around but that. But if they came up, to, uh, you know, if they oh, if they regain power, there's no reason to drop the anchor. Right. But then it went out again. If that's the case, that will be the reason they did not uh, deploy their anchor or anchors at the, at the right time. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, even on a 30-footer, which is nothing like a 1,000-footer, but um, I lost power in, right in the river channel near Sinise Ferry one day. Both engines died. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the current is there. I do not want to run aground. I dropped my anchor right away. As soon as it would not restart instantly, I dropped the anchor. So I would not drift ashore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that would have been I a bigger see mess. That. that would be the first thing that uh, most of us think about. But when you're talking about a almost a thousand footer, yeah, that's a that's that's a big thing. And yeah. I don't know how fast that anchor would grab Plus hold and hold weight. on. I was going to say, I can't see an anchor stopping something that big oh, just yeah. on a dime. On a dime, it probably would right, not. Right. But yeah. It would probably still drag it. But in a plus, it all the panels later of catch. cargo it had on that ship, too. Yeah, the uh, containers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots and lots of containers. And they said that no bridge probably would have withstood no, 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 no. the impact from no. that. Uh, the... Uh, I, I can see some safety measures being implemented. I pulled up and looked on Google Earth yesterday, that whole area. I'm not real familiar with it, but I did get aboard a ship there uh, many years ago, right around the corner at Curtis Bay. And that's just a couple of miles away by water uh, from the site of this location. And that's where the Coast Guard station, uh, Coast Guard Yard is, they call it. And, uh, I, I, probably not practical to do it there. But it's like a lot of ships coming up the Cape Fear River in Wellington. I don't know that all of them have it, but a big chunk of them have tugboats connected to them. Right. Two off the bow that are bouncing back and forth and one on the stern with a line on it so it can back down and keep that ship in case they do lose power. Keep that ship from going sideways as it crosses under the Cape Fear Memorial Bridge mm. and as it's approaching the state ports. Uh, I've been aboard those tugboats just shooting video in the past. And that's the way it works. That's the way they do it. <clears throat> that was a lot of pictures from the air of it, too. But I, I don't know. I, you know, maybe if it had tugs attached to it, they could have backed down on that thing. The tugboats, I, you know, that ship, yeah, it's got a lot of power on it. But our tugboats, for as small as they are, they got a bunch of power. We open up a new business, Rayford. No, well, they've got I just don't know that they... I don't know that they have standard operating procedures or requiring right. the tugs to help the ships navigate in and out of the port. Well, I imagine this will be a lengthy investigation. Oh, they yes. get it all figured out and then some new protocols <coughs> put into Maybe place. Maybe so. I don't know. I, you know, it's way beyond me. I got a small boat right. compared to theirs. Oh, sure. <coughs> My boat's is smaller than the tugboats that use <laughs> and doesn't have the power either. Anyway, sonar has hit on several vehicles uh, in the river bottom. They found that yesterday. When the ship hit the bridge, something about fuel is what they're investigating now. But suddenly there was a big bunch of smoke that came yeah, up and that. flames that yes. came up. I don't know where that fuel came from, but was it hit off the bow side? Sure that did. general area hit the bridge. This is not the first time that same ship had a problem. Twice, I know... Back April 2023, it was the last I did. And in 2016, it yes. ran into a bulkhead trying to dock okay. in Antwerp. Right. Had did a lot of damage to the ship. It was uh, taken offline there for a while. Well, I think the one in 2023, didn't it say, was a lot of their electrical, their their bells and whistles and warnings they have, and they dash? Had, they had internal issues. They had internal issues with that. And I, I've got a feeling they got it now. Yeah. You know, a lot of 
ships uh, fly under other nations' flags. Liberia is one of them. They don't have the same, um, let's see, how should, safety measures on board Liberian flagged ships. Now, that ship may be from Central America, but they're flying under a Liberian flag because they're not required to maintain the same protocol. Oh, I see what you're saying, mm-hmm. yes. They're yes. sort of lax. Yes. So that's what happens. I don't know about Singapore. I have no clue. But if a ship has got problems and they haven't, I, I, maybe we need to have inspections aboard these ships before they set sail from any coming to into or out of any of our ports of call in North in the United States. I don't know. I don't know how practical any of that would be. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping. Uh, of course, you never know what those other workers did when that ship was on its way. Um, maybe they ran and got in their cars. Well, there's also speculation. Yeah, true, true. And there's also also speculation that there was a not there was a shortage of crew members on the cargo ship. Well, they said they had 22, which is not unusual. Really, they yeah. were saying last night that you know, but like I say, there's so much speculation yeah. about that. But to the workers on the bridge, I guess they gave it no thought. They saw a cargo ship coming and just figured everything was normal. I would assume that I would hope that uh, some kind of bells and whistles went off. Right. Because I know they stopped vehicles from coming onto the bridge from both ends. That would have been the clue for me if I was a worker up there getting my truck and leave. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but you know what was crazy? If you watch the video where it shows the ship approaching the bridge mm-hmm. and then it shows it hitting the bridge, you can look to the right on that video and you can see where the the crew workers, their flashing lights, you know, their trucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You can actually see that. Really? And then when the ship hits the bridge and it all collapses, it all falls down. And like, hey, mm-hmm. At that point in time, there's, you know, well, two out of the eight made it. That's 25%. Right. I think that in itself is remarkable, watching that watching that collision and the collapse. They're lucky. They're very lucky. Right. And first of all, the water is cold, 47 degrees yeah. yesterday morning. What's the, what's, the, uh, what's the lifespan, so to say? I'm trying to think of the right word. Like if you were in that cold weather, well, water. When you, when you get into really cold water like that, hypothermia, hypothermia sets, in. sets in. And uh, depending upon you, how strong you are, uh, or, you know, how much fat that you got on you, honestly, how much clothing that you've got on you, right. uh, the longer you can last, the the more agile you are. And I assume that those construction workers, at least some of them, were fairly, you know, right. healthy, you sure. would think. Uh, but the, there's a short period of time. It, you don't die from hypothermia. Thermia. You die because you can't stay afloat any longer. Your arms right. freeze up. Your legs freeze up. The, you know, you lose motion. And then you drown. A hypothermia attributes. Yes. But it's not actual cause. No, well, it doesn't. I'll tell you. No. I, I have, I've thought about it. What if it would, I, I don't think I would have the strength to try to get out of the vehicle and swim my way up top. Don't know how long the vehicles floated. True. Don't know if they were under any of that those that steel that was hanging out there. I, I don't know. It's it's a mess. It's, it's a, a horrible. It is horrible. It is horrible. It is a horrible situation. Nightmare. And then again, to think, every day, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of people in eastern North Carolina cross bridges. Not all of them are like that one but all of them have the potential to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. How's that sound? I don't like <coughs> driving over bridges. I have a phobia about it, actually. You got phobias about everything. I, because, reason. <laughs> Look right here. I don't I, like I bridges. I don't care for bridges either. I, I close my eyes bridges. driving over them. And I'll be driving with my eyes closed across the bridge. How, a, how sick is that? I have a small 1961 Chevrolet station wagon with a 283 engine in it. For you guys who are car people, you know what that is. That's an old one, 61 model. It's a great little engine. Mm-hmm. It's not a vehicle that tows a lot of stuff, heavy stuff. But I was headed for Sarasota, Florida one year. Mm-hmm. 
and I had a 22-foot Airstream trailer hooked to the back, which was fine for normal towing. But then going south on 17, I came to a little community called Charleston, South Carolina. There was a bridge there at the time. It went up about that kind of an angle mm -hmm. called the Cooper River Bridge. Mm -hmm. And I knew how steep that bridge was. At the bottom of that bridge, I said, I think it was 45 in those days. I was running about 70 before I got there. I was running 35 at yes. the top of that bridge, and I had my foot on the floorboard all the way. Yes. There was um, going into Charleston, <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's the same bridge, but I not just now. remember it, I, it was, this was back 20, 25 years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's a new one, but I just remember it was a horrible bridge, and I traveled over Stupid. during a tropical storm. Oh, well, that was silly. They should have closed it. Well, they normally close those bridges well, well, because of wind. I was going to my brother's wedding, but I'm going to tell you what. It was, well, you could have gone by Columbia. I would have went a whole different way. <laughs> Columbia, that's, that's where he lives now. But that's a long way to go to go to Charleston. Mm -mm. But, um, yeah, it was treacherous. I'll never forget. I was driving a Jeep Cherokee, and I said, oh, no, my. never do this again. Oh, they're kind of boxy. Yes, and yeah. they're light. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> All right, let's take a break, Stupid. do a little bit of the weather. By the way, next week, uh, our marine forecast is going to be sponsored. Got a brand new sponsor here. Yes, it did. Yeah, what's, what's the name of that company? I don't know. You know it? Hmm. Community Prevention Services. Community Prevention Services mm -hmm. will sponsor our marine forecast. Correct. Beginning next Monday, so yeah. stay tuned for that. Yeah. We'll tell you all about Community Prevention Services. These good weather. Kelly knows all about it, and I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about it. More than you wanted to know. Not necessarily. Well, I mean, you I, learned some new I, facts. I have an open mind. I want to know a lot. <laughs> Just means we're going to have good weather for now on. Yeah, let's hope, right? Yeah, you're starting out a week that's going to be looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, April Fool's Day. Starts uh, yeah, out, right. Starts out April Fool's. Yeah. <laughs> that's also Easter Monday. Yes, so. it is Easter Monday. Yeah, so that'll be good. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have candy? Are we going to have baskets? Well, I'm going to be in Atlanta hating my life that week. So. Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. You know how Hot. I feel about going there. Yeah. You feel about that way going everywhere, don't you? Well, a lot of t let me tell you, learn a lot going. But I don't <laughs> like going to conferences in Atlanta. I just don't. We'll just stay locked up. You'll be fine. I just don't like the traffic. Well, don't drive. Mm -hmm. When you get there, just park your car. That that is the plan. Okay. Well, don't worry about it. You can get there. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. Do a little bit of weather. We'll be back on the other side at seven thirty this morning. We got Dr. Rosemary Stein going to talk to us about all things, uh, particularly pediatrically related. Is that a word? I, I think you just made a new word, but I like yes, it. it works. Uh, and we'll talk about that. And uh, also, oh you got, got a question for her. We have another schedule change. Uh-oh. Chris Miller will be calling in around 740, 745 this okay. morning. Okay, sounds good. So, Chris Miller, uh, we'll be more time. We'll find out yes. all things sports, too, luckily. Right. So, uh, hang in there for that. And uh, then a little after uh, uh, Chris wraps up, uh, we're going to be talking with Peter? Our Medicare specialist, mm -hmm. Peter Wright. You're live in local real talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. You're live in local real talk. And uh, uh, it's also known as, what's that show? WSME. Is your phone plan messing with your savings plan? Don't get stuck paying for things you don't want. With Verizon, you only pay for what you need. And for a limited time, when you bring your own phones to a Verizon store, you'll get an amazing price on your plan. Plus, you'll save on things you actually love, like the Netflix and Mac with Ads Bundle. And it's on our award-winning 5G network. Bring your phones to your Verizon store today for an incredible deal. A better plan to save is Verizon. Additional terms and conditions apply. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Anjali. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just got an alert for a strange charge on card. No problem. We make sure you're never held responsible for unauthorized purchases on your Discover card. Let's see. Did you purchase something from a t-shirt cannon store yesterday? Absolutely not. No, I already have like three. Zero fraud liability guarantee. It pays to Discover. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Limitations apply. A plan every adult family member should consider is the pre-arranged funeral. It's the worry-saving thing to do for your family. Making pre-arrangements helps to alleviate the additional stress on family members that can come with arranging a loved one's funeral. Jones Funeral Home's prepaid funeral plan
Fusion. They make a practical evaluation of costs possible, and it's the best way to take an unpleasant task off the shoulders of the family. Call Jones Funeral Home at 455-1281. With locations in Jacksonville, Richland, Swansboro, and Holly Ridge. In a season of falling temperatures and rising energy bills, your local Bryant professional is always ready. Standing by to protect your home's comfort and defend you from uncomfortable temperatures and the higher energy bills associated with them. Ready to do whatever it takes for your home, your family, and you to be comfortable without breaking the bank. Because when the temperature falls, that's when your local Bryant professional turns up the heat efficiently. Call Daily Feet and Air Conditioning at 346-4311 and let them keep you comfortable this winter. Daily Feet and Air Conditioning serving our community for over 25 years. Also, Down East can help you with your home guttering needs. Call Down East today at 346-4311. Bryant, whatever it takes. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Chino Italian Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Chino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Chino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. This is live and local Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Marine forecast for you naughty nautical sailors out there. Small craft advisory in effect through tomorrow afternoon. Gale for well, uh, watch is in effect from tomorrow afternoon through Friday morning. Offshore today, winds are going to be out of the southeast around 10 knots. Sea sports are 6 feet except 2 to 3 near shore. Dominant period 13 seconds. Sounds and rivers of light shot. You want to go out, uh, stay close to shore. You know, a few miles offshore, you'll be okay. And uh, with a 13-second uh, dominant period that's in between waves, it's looking okay close to shore. Offshore, four to six footers, so be careful. Tomorrow, southeasterly winds, 10 to 15 knots, becoming northerly, 25 to 30, with gusts to 45 tomorrow afternoon. 45 knots. It's about 52, 53 miles per hour. You understand? Don't do it. Seas four to six feet, two to four near shore. Dominant period, nine seconds. Sounds and rivers a moderate chop, becoming very rough in the afternoon. Friday, northwesterly winds, 20 to 25 knots, diminishing to 15 to 20 in the afternoon. Gusts up to 30. Seas four to six feet, two to three near shore. Sounds and rivers rough, diminishing to choppy in the afternoon. Today, mostly cloudy, a high of 69. Southeast winds, seven to 10 miles an hour. Tonight, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, then showers are likely and potentially a thunderstorm after midnight. Otherwise, prior to and in between, cloudy with a low of 57. Rainfall amounts tonight would be between 1 and 2 inches. Tomorrow, showers and thunderstorms. Some of the storms could produce heavy rainfall, high of 61. Winds could gust as high as 26 miles an hour, 90% chance, which means it's Pretty good chance it's going to rain. And precipitation amounts will be between one and two inches. Tomorrow night, showers likely, but mainly before 8 p.m. Otherwise, cloudy, then clearing, a low of 42. You can have a fireplace. Again, if, if it before I go to bed. So oh, that's what, true. You don't what's want to wait like is yeah. waiting until 1030 yeah. before it drops below 45. Says, well, that's just you know, too late for me. It says cloudy during the early evening. Now that <clears throat> everyone's perception of early evening is different. So yeah. Yeah. And then, but Friday starts where things start to like kick in better. It's Sunny good, high good of 67. Friday. Gusty, but it's going to be 67. The weekend looks amazing. Easter Sunday looks beautiful. 78 degrees. I'm liking that. I'm all about it. I'm liking it. All right, Kelly, you said something about thunderstorms. I know, but it's summer, spring now, so it don't matter. Doesn't count. <laughs> don't count. Another attempted breach of the southern border was halted, and the wannabe illegals were turned back by members of the Texas National Guard. Video shows a man trying to open a path through a fence and cutting razor wire to make a hole for dozens of migrants to sneak into Texas. The incident, which took place near Gate 45, comes just days after more than 100 people rushed National Guard soldiers near Gate 36, just a few miles away. Last Thursday's incident saw the group of migrants knock over five guardsmen who attempted to stand in their way, resulting in troops being treated for minor injuries at a hospital. 
One migrant from Honduras, 21-year-old Junior Ivarcito Benitez, was charged with assault on a public servant, a third-degree felony, by the way, according to the New York Post. Evaristo Benitez is currently being held in the El Paso County Jailhouse. Texas authorities, apparently not waiting on Biden's security forces to get the job done, continue to review security footage of the incident to determine which other migrants were responsible for the storming of the National Guard troops. Don't get me wrong, the Border Patrol officers want to do their jobs, but orders from Sleepy Joe had them at a standstill twiddling their thumbs. In Sunday's incident, migrants near the hole created in the border apparently appeared to peacefully follow the commands of the soldiers, and they returned to Mexico. The wire and fencing that was cut was recently put up by the National Guard and Texas Department of Public Safety as a way to deter migrants from crossing the border illegally, instead directing them to use a legal point of entry to turn themselves into authorities if there is a way to come across the border illegally at places where the Border Patrol is set up to handle you, why are you trying to sneak in? Cut the razor wire, sneak in. Because you got something to hide. Well, it goes back to what I said about the video they were showing of those migrants last week mm -hmm. fighting Border Patrol. They were all male. Yeah. They were all young males. Yes. Um, there Families. were no women, no children, no families, just men. And, and you can't tell me that they were just, you know, it's highly suspect but that's what's coming across. You know, we had people even last week talking about, even on this show, talking about, well, this family is trying to come through. Women, children. No, no, no. Watch that video. Families are coming through at the legal points of entry. Yes. Where they can be screened. Correct. And uh, they can be waited, wait to their turn to see a judge. Mm -hmm. they, they sign up for appointments. Those who come across at other locations. Nefarious. Well, let me think about this. Mm -hmm. Duh. But they're all young Males, yeah. like it just there's yeah, no sure. women, no children, now, no elderly. It, it's kind of like, like what are they coming here to do? It's kind of like when you're driving along the road in the middle of the night and suddenly you see a whole bunch of blue lights and red lights and all sorts of lights up ahead. You know, there's a checkpoint, right? Yeah, right. Well, guess who the highway patrol is on the lookout for? The people who turn around. That's right. Oh, I watch that every time I uh, yeah, go to road checking. Check point, check, yeah. check it's station. awesome to watch. When you watch them turn around or they stop, pull over, and they switch drivers. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that too, actually. Yes, it happens. See them throw stuff out the window. Uh -oh, I'm like, come on now. You can go by and pick up some full bottles of booze if you try it. Mm -hmm. Probably and more other than things. just that. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. drug. Yeah. Little baggies. <laughs> anyway, that, that's that's. That's one of the things that's happening there. People are, you know, law enforcement is very suspicious. And um, Texas National Guard, I mean, they're, they're there. They're ready to roll. Mm. They're enjoying this. I mean, it's, it's better than training weekends. <laughs> yeah. And you're getting paid for it, too. Uh, I mean, I want to bring up something. I want to wait till after. Yeah, Dr. You know, Rose, is, uh, Dr. Rose hasn't called yet. But this has to do with some other people coming across the border. Uh-oh. Well, we may have an issue. Uh-oh. Our phones aren't working. Nice. Oh, and there she is. I'll try this one. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Sorry about the tardiness. It's all right. It's fine. I was just concerned our phones may not be working, but I, I, I assume that it is now, so I'm talking to you. Dr. Rosemary Stein, <laughs> how's everything going in the central part of the state? And not too bad. It's a little bit of a quiet week. I think uh, if the the children are sick, we haven't heard much from them. Well, that's good. Uh, maybe we'll get a whammy today, but it has been kind of slowish, um, so not too much illness. Well, that's good. Get a little rest for you, anyway. Rest for the that's weary. Right. I, yesterday, I, I thought of a, a couple things, and we we batted around it here just a little bit. Wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, you know, summer is not that far away now. Summer vacation time for kiddies and all that sort of good stuff. Is it too early for parents to sit down, maybe when the kids go to bed at nighttime and sit down and say, let's draw up a plan of action for this summer, like maybe some road trips here or there, educational road trips, plus, you know, fun and relaxation road trips. Drive around our state, look at historical monuments, look at the stuff that you pass by. There's a lot of people pass by every day that never stop and talk to their kids about it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful road trip? In yes. fact, I was thinking about the same exact thing, that um, maybe a, a little mini um, time of that 
uh, for next week. Uh -huh. So most families get to the Easter week with the children being off for a week. Right. Uh, and don't plan at all. It's a little, it might be a little late, but not too, too late to plan on something next week. Or at least something for the children to do uh, if they're of that age where they could stay in, in the home, you know, but like the, the tweens and the, the, <laughs> the adolescents. Uh, for them to have some sort of activity so that they keep themselves busy and it's not on their phone all the time. Sure. But certainly that would that could be an introduction to what they're going to do this, this summer. And they can maybe even investigate. Why don't you, this next week, you make uh, the, the, those teenagers investigate. So what are the places across the state uh, where we can go or maybe even in the southeast and we can visit uh, it, it independence or civil war uh, areas that, that we could learn about, you know, the American history or, or even our own family history. Sure. You can take your, your last name and, and figure out, okay, so let's, let's choose some places that somebody in history with the same last name as us, who knows, maybe we're even related, uh, has been and what did they do, whether good or bad. And we can, we can travel to those places and see those places. I, I think that your idea is a wonderful one, and you can use use this Easter uh, break that's coming up as the kids making the research to what what do you think, or even have a little competition among, among the kids, uh, and and have them write a, a composition on what should we do uh, for the the summer, yeah. and and uh, at the end of the week you, you read them all and. And you decide, and the family decides. I mean, there's so many things to do that would pass the time away in a very constructive, positive way. You know, and uh, you know, families could get together, uh, neighbors, uh, extended families, or whatever, those with cousins in it, and you could actually rent a minivan, or not a minivan, but rent one of those big passenger vans, perhaps, and swap off uh, parents. You know, That's to saying, yeah. take a bunch of kids. And this parent takes them one day, this parent takes them another day, yada, yada, yada. And they go to visit historical locations. They visit, like you say, look for your family members and see right. what they did. If there's anything, if, particularly if you're local for North Carolina. And um, everything from the zoo to uh, uh, the you Maritime got, Museum. Right. The, uh, the Museums uh, in Raleigh. Uh, Maritime Museum here in, in, in uh, Beaufort. Beaufort. Is, uh, and talk about the Queen Anne's Revenge. Do a little research yes. on the Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard, she, every, all kids like pirate stories, right? And, yeah, uh, exactly. You, know, and, and it, it, you turn something bad, like the, the, the uh, ship tragedy, into something good. Well, let's learn about ships. Absolutely. Uh, to, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much. When, you know, the, one of the first uh, Revolutionary War battles was in North Carolina. I think it was the, the Morris Bridge. Morris Creek. Battle. Absolutely. Morris Creek. That's and great. That's um, a great way so, to spend an entire day, take a lunch. They've got picnic tables there. And, and, they the will, and they will also come around. You make arrangements in advance for a group, and they'll have a guy dressed up in Revolutionary War garb, mm -hmm. and he'll come around and talk about the history of that location. So much in North Carolina. You'll learn more there than so you will from any historical Carolina. accounts in the book. I'll tell That's you right. that. You know, you can t spend a week South Carolina, Georgia. I mean, it's uh, what what an exciting idea! I hope some parents got got a hold of that one and they're excited and they say, "Yep, yeah, that's worth it." The kids are going to grow. They're supposed to grow. They're supposed to want amusement parks and and to go to Disney World. But you know what? They're not going to remember Disney World because this this or, or rem remember it as much because. That's what everybody does. Uh, sure. This would be different. This would be cool, and this would add depth to, to our kids and our family. In a little town between here and uh, Wilmington called Hempstead, it's a community, it's not a town, it's unincorporated, there's a big old tree there. There's a monument underneath that tree. I've known about it since I was a little kid because we used to make that trip about once every two weeks to see my grandparents. And uh, it was called the George Washington tree. It's so got a little monument there. It says George Washington slept here on his trek through the South by horseback. Oh, wow. You didn't know that, did you? It's on okay. 17. It's on 17. I know right where it's at. Yeah, it's a big old oak tree. Yes. So how much well, of all that is, idea. how much of all of that is lure? I, who knows? Nobody was around to record it, but, you know, it's reported and there's a monument there. And then you can head up to the gardens in Wilmington. There you can go to the early gardens. I mm -hmm. mean, there's all sorts of stuff to do in southeastern North Carolina, historical in nature. I would get a group of parents together and one, one day, one take them. Yep. 
next day another one or next week, whatever. Split yeah. it up. Yeah, and then swap them off. Just move them around. Different locations. That's, that's great. I love it. I love those ideas. Like I said, it, it adds character and great memories to your kids. Yeah, and it's something they can pass along to their kids as my dad passed along to me. Yes. About that tree. That's fabulous. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, anyway... How are the kids are apparently doing fairly well, sick wise. The sector has kicked in, I'm assuming. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yep, lots of allergies, but nothing out of the norm. You yeah. know, and, and such a, a, a quite a bit of uh, gastro and stomach bug. Really? Uh, so lots of hand washing so that they don't spend a miserable Easter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Easter's coming up. Going to be a lot of eggs out there, and you might find some left over from last year. That uh, don't eat, don't eat those, please. <laughs> You've never done that. You, That's disgusting. We used to find eggs uh, left over from the year before. It was pretty obvious that they were old. Oh, but, uh, no, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely don't eat those. Those might not be good for your stomach. They, they won't might be. put you in bed. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, for uh, a couple of days or in the bathroom. Any uh, any funny stories you, you can recall about Easter egg hunting or anything like that? Oh, I just remember being in New York City in, at, for Easter and having the the biggest snowfall ever. I mean, it was like <laughs> two feet of wow. snow on Easter Day. Wow. And uh, my brother was maybe a year old, and we have pictures still, just walking around in the snow. And walking around that actually meant you're walking over the snow and you're two foot feet up in the air. Oh, wow. Because it, it snowed that much. So we were all snowing for Easter. And Easter was in April that year. So, yeah. So it was it, it was uh, an anomaly. Yeah. So, okay. Um, that's, that's one of the most memorable Easter's that I have. Well, okay. I was just thinking when you mentioned New York City on Easter, I, I was hoping you weren't picking up any of those pigeon eggs and taking those back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All right. That's not what we did. <laughs> Dr. Rosemary Stein, thank you. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Happy right. Easter to Happy all. Easter. You, you take too. care. You're live in local Real Talk, you know, 97.1, 1120 AM, WSMA. Coming up, we're going to have a, a quick Miller time here, an early Miller time this week, because uh, he's going to be out of town tomorrow. Chris will be checking in with us right after the break. And then we've got. The one, the only, the man of the hour, because uh, you all only got a few hours left. If you got some changes that you need to make in your Medicare plan, there is still an opportunity for a limited number of you. So stay tuned. Peter Wright will be joining us. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., buddy SME. What's that show? We'll be right back. Freedom 97.1, WSME. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper and print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Top Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that, too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos, too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing specializes in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. In fact, they paint most anything except cars, including homes, businesses, apartment complexes, decks, and they do minor repairs, wood repairs, pressure washing, waterproofing, and more, including storm repair and cleanup. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing, fully licensed, insured, and locally owned and operated by Roger Carroll Jr. References available and customer satisfaction is always guaranteed. So if you want to paint and maintain power wash or need a new roof call southern touch painting maintenance and power washing at 910-390-749 or visit southern touch painting mc.com southern touch painting maintenance power washing and roofing salutes our troops and is proud to be part of the continued growth of onslow and surrounding counties 
Welcome to Lena Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane and Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane and Associates Family Dentistry. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. And uh, we're and, back uh, in Jonathan right now. It's Miller time. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Uh, good morning, my friends. How's everybody doing on this cool uh, Wednesday morning? Is yeah. it cool? It feels warm in here. It's I'm cool. uh, like a 74 it's degrees in the studio. Chilly outside? Mm-hmm. Okay. Chilly today. Hot tamale. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Well, we uh, uh, get to call for some rain later on this afternoon. So, uh, um, I wanted to give a, uh, a report on the, the local high school baseball action. It Uh-oh. starts early this morning, uh, 9 o'clock at Richland High School. Uh, the, the games usually were starting around um we're starting, um, starting at one uh, the previous two days, but uh, uh, with the threat of inclement weather, weather, they decided to move the first game at nine o'clock. So, uh, Rayford, if you're interested, come out to Richland High School this uh, later on this morning. Okay, I believe. Let's see. I can probably slip slide in there very quickly. About I could be there about nine ten, right from here. No, yeah, of course. And uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's been a good, it's been a good event so far. And uh, uh, your Jacksonville Cardinals. Uh, have done really well. They uh, they opened with the win over Southwest, and then they um, um, they they defeated uh, Richland yesterday. So they're playing some good baseball. They got their first two wins this week. So uh, so I have a chance to to win again against White Oak. They're they're, they're the ones actually playing the nine o'clock game tonight. Jackson versus White Oak. Nine, Excellent. Nine this morning. Go cards. So, uh, go cards. So they'll uh, they'll have a chance to do well and uh, and get another victory if they play well. Well, that's that's good. Uh, you know, uh, it used to be baseball was popular at one point in time. Then it kind of died out around here as far as local sports are concerned. Uh, just didn't get the publicity, I guess, for a while. But uh, now I'm glad you take are taking care of that, and I'm glad we got a good team. Well, yeah, they're uh, well, they're yeah, they're coming along. They're they have some young guys uh, playing the Cardinals too. They started out losing their first ten games of the season, but then. Uh, but again, they're you know they're they're playing some tough teams, some tough Wilmington teams that are non-conference and uh, and even in conference, they're playing some tough teams. So uh, they're coming along pretty good. They're getting better. And uh, I did want to throw a shout out to the to our uh, to everyone's favorite baseball team these days, the Jack Ospreys. I ran, I ran into Coach uh, Judell, uh, the head coach of the Ospreys, last night at the at the high school baseball action, and ran into. Uh, general manager Dylan Hughes the other day uh, mm. on um, on Monday got to talking and uh, tell you what they're uh, I think I think they're all excited and they're going to put together a great team that's going to represent the represent everybody well on the field and off the field uh, with um, with the way they behave and the way they're going to be gentlemen and, uh, and and engage with the community and um, they uh, there's going to be some pretty neat stories uh, a lot of a lot of these young men a lot of these players are going to come from different walks of life and. Uh, and, um, you know, we're going to be able to teach them, you know, how, you know, how things are in Osley County, but they're going to be able to teach us some things from their, from their uh, areas as well. So it's going to be a pretty neat situation. You know, are the, uh, are, are, can the Ospreys uh, go out and recruit high school players or do they strictly limited to college? It, it's a very limited um, uh, situation that you can do that. It, you can have a high school player, or a kid that is getting, you know, just graduated that is going hasn't played at college yet. Okay. But they have to be a let's just say they have to be a pretty dang good player, and you have to go through a lot of um, <laughs> um, a, a lot of uh, stuff to, to be able to make sure that kid, that those players get approved. Most of these players that play on these summer collegiate teams are um, have already been in college uh, at least one year in college, but two, around two or so. Um, most of New college and Division two, II, Division three players. Um, so, um, but again, if if it's if a kid that just graduated high school is a top prospect and he wants to play on, uh, on one of these teams, uh, they do have to go through a process. Oh, well, that's good. At least there's an opportunity. So, for the best of the best, let's do it. Oh yeah, exactly. And you know, baseball coaches, baseball managers will will talk. That's the. Uh, 
baseball is a very repetitive sport, and that's uh, um, you know that it's one of the sports where you, the the only way you get better is to continue to play, continue to play, and that's why these coaches want their players to to play so they can see the the different pitching and the different uh, ways uh, guys hit the ball. So it's um, um you know yeah it, it, it's just a, a great situation, and uh, I'm really gl- I'm really glad that the community's uh, back in the Ospreys already, and uh, I look forward to uh, the fans coming out uh, throughout the season this summer. You know, I, I, I sometimes um, I think that I'm an idea person. I, I, here's a really cool thought. Um, how about one night uh, have some of the Osprey pitchers, or at least two of them anyway, to come out and have a bunch of old fogies like me get up there at the at the uh, plate, the home plate, and let them throw some stuff and see if any of us can hit it. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think they'd be embarrassed of uh, pitching you right for I think they'd be embarrassed. Uh, Why? Uh, just how- <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my own so, bat. Uh, but no, that might be a uh, you know I, I, they have different ideas. They have, you know, and, and a lot of it's going to be uh, you know kid friendly to make sure the kids, uh, uh, young young boys and young girls are um, um, you know have some role models to look to look up to and uh, um, and, and things like that. So let's. Uh, um, but yeah, they're um, you know they're they're going to do a good job of making sure uh, you know the community is engaged and that the the community um, um, is, is proud of his ball team. So it's um, um it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I'd have to get uh, if I hit it, I'd have to I would have to hit it hard enough to knock it out of the park because I could walk around the plates that way instead of run. Doctors in the stands. <laughs> You know, but uh, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and uh, um, like you know, it was just kind of neat to see Dylan and Coach Judol um, um, over there, and we got to talking about some of the great story ideas. And uh, I, I mean, it's gonna be uh, you know, you know, players from Japan, uh, players from mm. Canada, players from different parts of the country. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be uh, it's, it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be pretty neat to see how <clears throat> excuse me, all these players who kind of are the Kind of are, are some the key players on, on their own college teams. Yeah, how they come together as as one team in a short period, and um, you know sometimes maybe put their egos aside and and work together. So that's going to be pretty neat to see as well. Yeah, about two months and one week, I think, and first game June one, right here in Jacksonville, right? Yep, June first um, um, at Jack M. Yet uh, Baseball Park. The city has been working hard to to. Uh, um, revamp the, uh, the you know the the fan experience there and add some bleachers. So it's a uh, um, it's been a slow process, but uh, they're they're working hard. And uh, um, you know I think uh, opening day is uh, or opening home day is going to be uh, right around the corner, and it's going to be fun. Go Ospreys! Okay, thank you, sir. March Madness. Oh, March Madness! Oh yeah, I forgot about that. My God, I'm move, I'm moving way ahead. Do we yeah, still? So it's I'm still March. State Wolfpack, right? But, uh, they're still playing. Yes. The Tar Heels of North Carolina are playing. Duke Blue Devils are still playing. So, uh, um, you know, four uh, four ACC teams, uh, Clemson included, are all playing in the uh, in the Sweet Sixteen. So that's uh, that's nice. That's a pretty neat uh, situation. Down to Sweet yes. Sixteen. Looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. See you next Have week. Have a great day. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom ninety seven point one eleven twenty AM WSME. We'll be right back. Freedom ninety seven point one. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many more at your locally owned and operated Richlands. Less down home, down the street, Highway 24, Richlands. Whole fresh picnic, $1.29 a pound. Half cut boneless strip loin, $7.99 a pound. Half cut boneless strip loin, $7.99 a pound. Family pack cube beef steak, just $5.79 a pound. Whole bottom round, $3.99 a pound. White, red, or black seedless grapes, $2.99 a pound. One pound package of strawberries, two ninety nine. Enjoy down home country cooking in the deli seven days a week in the store. Country breakfast starts at five thirty a.m. daily at your Richlands Piggly Wiggly Deli, and is home to the famous Moro Bowl. Can also take advantage of the fast friendly pharmacy located inside Richlands Piggly Wiggly. Richlands Piggly Wiggly, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Highway twenty four, Richlands. Remember, say big with the pig. <laughs> 
Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, your trusted local carrier indoor weather team. Serving all of your heating and air conditioning needs since 1967, now offers residential and commercial duct and dryer vent cleaning, and now offers expert residential and commercial plumbing service. In case there are power outage due to a storm or for any reason, be prepared with a Generac generator for your home or business. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning has Generac generators in stock ready to install today. Remember, better breathing comes with cleaner air. Let Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning improve the air quality in your home or business with professional air duct cleaning. As always, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning is available 24-7 for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing emergency needs. Turn to the carrier experts. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, with locations in Jacksonville and Hampstead. Visit online, HumphreyHeating.com. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, since 1967. Relax, we're on the way. Chico's Tires, 2320 Wilmington Highway is Jacksonville's oldest tire company. And now Jacksonville's newest tire company is Little Chico's, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard. Little Chico's carries all the major brands and all sizes, such as Michelin, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, and many others, and all new tires have warranty. In addition to a great selection of new tires, Little Chico's has used tires starting at only $30. In addition to new and used tires, Little Chico's does brake service, minor auto and truck repair, expert custom window tinting, and towing. So if you need tires, new or used, brake service, minor auto or truck repair, expert for window tinting, or if you need a tow, visit Jacksonville's newest tire store, Little Chico's, 1675 North Marine Boulevard. By phone, 910-333-0473. For Little Chico's Tire Service, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville. Freedom 97.1 WSME. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, it's March and talk about March Madness. Uh, March Madness comes in <laughs> shapes and sizes these days. And joining us now, Peter Wright, our licensed Medicare and healthcare agent. And uh, he's, he's one of us. He lives right here in Jacksonville and uh, all sorts of cool things happening around Medicare. It's that time. We're getting down to the wire here. <laughs> For those of you who need to make a change that have not made a change, you maybe you made a change and you don't like what you changed to, you got a couple of days here to redo it, right? Yeah, you got till end of March, March of thirty first. That's so right, that's, right now. That's right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think Sunday's the thirty first, right? It is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and can they do it on the thirty first if they file the papers? Yeah. But, yeah. but they got you, you, they're you're here to help them do that. So I'm here. Yeah, I'm in the Walmart on, uh, well, today, Wednesday, the whole of the day from uh, 10 till 1 and 2 till 6. And then also Thursday from 2 till 6 and Friday from 2 till 6. Okay. You can see me at the Walmart or give me a call at other times. Yeah, well, get your pencil out. We'll give you a, a telephone number here a couple of times before Peter leaves here this morning. So uh, go ahead and get ready for that just in case you can't get to the Walmart between now and Friday. He can take your calls, and he'll help you out. He'll guide you in the right direction, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, you, you got one of your highlights here. You say um, people really need to be careful about scams right now, right? Yeah, until at least until March the 31st. I mean, always be careful about scams, but uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of agents or unscrupulous agents phoning people at the moment i had one last week i uh one incident happened i i've signed somebody up on wednesday and on thursday uh they phoned me up and said peter i've just had somebody call me um about my medicare uh please confirm that's not from you and i said no it's not from me um and, and she she went on to tell me what had happened a uh, she had a phone call from a, uh, and it was a foreign sounding person. Uh -huh. uh, they'd started asking her about Medicare and said, uh, making sure that she you know, was enrolled in the right plan. And then they said, well, we'll put you through to another, uh, to a, a licensed agent for you to speak to. And she said, but I've already you know, got my own licensed agent. And the guy just kept on saying, no, we'll put you through. So he put her through. And uh, and this other agent started to ask her for a Medicare number, 
a Medicaid number and she didn't want to give those. So she said, you've got them all ready. And uh, the, the previous guy she was speaking to then came back on the phone and said, look, I told you not to speak to it, not to ask any questions and put her, pulled her back and put her onto some, onto another agent. And she started speaking really? to this other agent who then uh, uh, started, you know, and she'd been told, you know, do not ask any questions. Just let them uh, make sure that everything's okay. So then this other agent started asking her for Medicare number and Medicaid again. And of course, she was asking questions. Anyway, this went on four or five times until she hung up. Just lie to them. Make up a number. BR549 is a great one to give. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that is, but I'll tell you later. It's from okay. the days of Junior Samples on Hee Haw. Uh -huh. That was his telephone number. BR549. Explain to Peter who he what he always. It was a TV show, a kind of a, a country type oriented TV show, a comedy show. It was fun. Uh -huh. So, he haw, he haw, he haw. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, if I let them do that, the, the other thing I have done before, I said, you know what? Why don't you, t since you know me, why don't you tell me what my birth date is? What are the last four digits of my social security number? Yeah. If you cannot answer that, goodbye. Because they can't. Well, yeah. I will tell you that I just got my mother hooked up with a good Medicare plan. Oh, I got—I know a guy that can I help tell out you, with that. They've been calling me for weeks and weeks yeah. for her. And I keep <laughs> telling them that she's deceased. But this last one, I decided to go with the flow. Oh, have fun with it. Yeah. So. I, I like having fun at their expense. She's signed up now. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. That's um, hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, so be careful. Do not, yeah, be careful of not getting scammed, as yeah. certainly before the end of this month, because yeah. that's it really, they, you, it's very likely that you'll get a phone call. And um, just FYI, those telephone numbers that you see that on caller on your caller ID, they're all fake numbers. They are not real numbers, or they don't belong to the people that are actually making the call. Mm -hmm. And the other good news is when you get those numbers, Go to the FCC, Federal Communications Commission website. They are taking complaints from people. They have issued one guy, South Dakota, I think he was. He lived in South Dakota and Minnesota. He had two addresses. And they fined him $9 million, $9.3 million mm -hmm. in a criminal court. And he will not be making any telephone calls. They find another guy, $3 million last week. Uh -huh. They've removed all phone privileges and all IP address privileges. And if he does it again, he just goes spend time in the big house. That's mm -hmm. the way things work. If you get these calls, make a note of the numbers that they're calling from. Report them. They will do some checking. Give them your number and the number that called you. They have a way to track IP addresses. Mm -hmm. Even though the phone numbers may be listed to somebody else, they can check the IP addresses because they come in via computer. They don't come in via telephone. That, that's the way it works. It looks like a telephone. It's just a suggestion, and the FCC likes the complaints. They get they don't have enough to do, so just let's hook them up. Do they do, they mm. do anything? Yes, they do, <laughs> but not as much as they should. Okay. But as far as I'm concerned, if they take on the telemarketers, I'm good with that. If they do nothing but take on telemarketers, I'm happy. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. You're live at local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, a.m. WSM. More with Peter Wright when we come back. Fox News is now. And then give us a call after the break. 910-333-0139. We'll be right back. WSME, Camp Lejeune, 246CJ, Jacksonville. Foster. Divers will be back in the Patapsco River in Baltimore this morning looking for six maintenance workers killed in the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. The crew of a container ship reported losing power before slamming into the bridge. A uh, ship approaching has just lost their steering. Maryland Transportation Authority got the bridge closed to traffic after the crew's mayday call. NBC News drops former Republican National Committee Chair Ronna McDaniel as a paid contributor after an on-air rebellion by show hosts complaining about her support of former President Trump's claim the 2020 election was stolen. Fox News Digital obtained an internal memo from NBC Universal News Group Chairman Cesar Conde to staff 
apologizing for hiring McDaniel in the first place. Fox is Ashley Strohmeyer, a bank robber with a fake bomb, is shot and killed by police in Fullerton, California. The suspect's described as a man in his 70s. America's listening to Fox News. Freedom 97.1. WSME. It's live and local. Real talk. Okay, we're back okay, live we're and back local. Live real talk. Local. And uh, in the studio with us is Peter Wright. And again, this is your time to call. He's a, a licensed, keyword there, licensed Medicare and healthcare agent. And uh, he can help you. And he doesn't charge you. That's one of the things. He's not going to charge you any money. When you call him or stop by the kiosk there on Marine Boulevard at the Walmart, just stop by and see him. He's there today from 10 until 1, and then again from 2 until 6, tomorrow from 2 until 6, and again on Friday from 2 until 6. Who is eligible for this open enrollment period? It's a little, it's through the 31st, through the end of this month. That's at midnight on Sunday. Who and under what conditions can they apply? Okay, so it's for anybody who has an advantage plan, uh, but you can make one change to your plan. And this is it's not this isn't advertised, but it's uh, it's an it's in order to let people um, make a change to their plan um, in case you know, one of their doctors isn't covered by the plan, or one of their medicines isn't in the plans formulary, or they they want a different plan because they're looking for a different benefit than what they had you know what they were able to get from a plan they've got right now. Mm-hmm. So that that's the reason for it. So, yeah, it, it's an opportunity. What it means is that when you sign up during the annual enrollment period from October through December, if you've happened to pick uh, an incorrect plan, um, you you've got one chance to make a change to that during the January through March period, and that's for anybody, whether you made a change back in October or not, you're able to um, make that change. And so, um, some of these plans, even though you signed up, maybe it was one of those scammers that called you and you signed up, got hooked up with them, you can still make that change, right? Yes. Get out from under that crap. Yeah. Well, yes. As long as you, you get, as I say, you get one opportunity to make a change. So if you've already made a change during January through March because of one of those scammers, then you'd, uh, you'd want to make a complaint about it mm-hmm. uh, to um to the company you've signed up with and you, that you want to go back to where you were or you know um that that's that's the so you get that one opportunity okay so you get everything taken care of by sunday and then we're off to the races waiting for next october right yes that's and, right but yeah but there are some times some some certain cases um i'm 62 years old yeah i wish and i'm going to turn 65 mm-hmm. i become eligible for medicare I can still talk to you about the best plan to go with, right? Yes. So people that are turning 65 or people that are retiring, um, mm. they could, uh, I can help uh, both of those instances. Uh, anybody that's moving. Um, Mo- uh, moving? What, what do you mean? From one county to another. Oh, really? Then you can make a change then because there'll be different plans available in each uh, county, what, which I'm still trying to understand. This is North Carolina. We got a hundred counties. Do we have a hundred different types of plans available? You get probably a hundred different types, different areas with different plans. In wow! Them. So you'll get, um, like Carteret, uh, Craven, and Onslow have pretty much got the same plans, except uh, Craven, you can get. Uh, you can you can get all four companies that we can here, but Carteret is only the three company three carriers that you can get. Really? I'm missing one of the carriers. Uh, Why is that? Um, it's <laughs> it's dependent on what the what, what the medical facilities are. Oh. It's been approved to gotcha. you know, to go for the year to come, and so you get a different mix of plans. Mm-hmm. Uh, from one county to another, based on their medical facilities. How and, how about? I mean, I live in Onslow, but let's just say I, I cross the border over into Carteret County, at Cedar Point, or in some like that, and I, I got a doctor over there. You, you're fine because you're in a North Carolina plan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
you 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 can go outside of your area uh, with an with a you know Blue Cross Blue Cross covers the whole of the county, yeah. for instance, uh, uh, whole of the state. Beg your pardon, uh, and some of these other uh, plans uh, do too. Okay, um, but uh, yeah. So you. You'd but if I there. lived in Carteret County and I've I've got a choice of three. I, I'm limited to those three, even if I've come to a facility in Onslow County to get treatment for something, right? Sorry, run that. If, if I live in this. Carter County, I have a yeah. choice of three. I pick one of them. Yeah. But I come over to Onslow County. I have to make sure that my doctor in Onslow County is covered by the is, plan that I got in, in Carter County. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would yeah, be interesting. That's, that's that, something else for y'all to think about. That's why whenever... I speak to someone, I ask them what their, you know, who their doctors are, and I look them up. But the networks are, are pretty darn good. They, you know, they've got, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a lot of doctors in the network. Like, okay. uh, and as I've said in the past, I can only talk. I've got, um, I've got permission to talk about Blue Cross on yeah. on the air. But Blue Cross has ninety seven percent of all the doctors in the state that take Medicare in their. Um, yeah, you know, in the network. Okay. So that, that's pretty cool. Why are some doctors not in a network? By their own choice? By their own choice. My doctor uh, up in um, uh, the doctor that I had in in, uh, in the Raleigh area uh, for years, he he was never in any advantage plan network. Now, ironically, he's moved to another practice. And uh, just as I've got myself a... Uh, a, a plan that would accept him anyway because it's a, a PPO. He's um, he's now joined the uh, he's now joined the he, he's joined the what do you call it a clinic where um, uh, he do, can do Medicare Advantage. Well, plans. that's good. All right, yeah. got a caller. Got a question. Good morning. Who's this? Uh, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, this? Fine, Chris. How are you, How are you sir? Today? Good morning. Doing well, doing well. Sorry, been a long time to talk. But I wanted to just mention about Peter. Um, <laughs> folks, uh, take advantage of his knowledge. Um, not only is he a, an award winner in the country, he, did, he doesn't want to talk about that, but I'm just going to say he is good well enough in his profession to be recognized um, for wow. his talents. And um, Rick, Peter, I want to thank you. People, if you get a chance, go by and see Peter, make an appointment. It'll be well worth your advantage to take advantage of Peter's knowledge. Um, because right now, a lot of uh, insurance companies are maybe canceling or not renewing with their physicians or hospitals and such. Peter's up to date on these things, and he will put you in the right wow. direction. And I say that because he did it for uh, my wife and I. And I just want to, Peter, cool. thank you very much and continue to share your wealth of knowledge with people. Well, thank you very much. Thank that's, you, Chris. Yeah, thank Chris, you. That, um, Take care. accolades uh, could not be more rewarding. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Oh, okay, stop the press. Well, let's, let's talk about this award winning let's now. Let's talk about this. <laughs> my attention. What kind of award did you win? What? We don't know. Uh, 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 top agent, well, one of the top agents, top 20 agents were both oh. uh, Blue Cross and, and another company as well. So, Very, uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Well, well deserved, I'm sure, because your wealth of knowledge is very apparent when you walk mm -hmm. in here and answer yes. our questions mm -hmm. and offer uh, some of the suggestions and Warnings about pitfalls that are out there waiting for a lot of us to uh, stumble and fall into. Yeah, I've also learned a lot, been able to give other people information when they ask me. I, I say, call Peter. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah, I, work here. Call I, I, Peter. I just carry your card. I got yes, you we have your card. I can't yes. one right here in front of me, but I have one in my wallet. So if anybody asks me, hey, how do I reach that guy? I pass him out at work. Yeah. But Peter's actually helped me with a couple of my family members, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yes, great job. Good. All right. Um, okay, now, after this 31st, after next, this coming Sunday, 
uh, things are going to change a little bit with you. You're going to be coming on here once a month instead of every week, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, of course, if anything changes during the year, just call us up and let us know You just in case something. Yeah. Can't wait till the yeah. next month to do it. <laughs> uh, we want to know that. But, uh, yeah, you, you've been a, a wealth of knowledge and, and a great resource for us and for the people like uh, Chris and others out there as well. So mm -hmm. we appreciate that, and everybody I've talked to appreciates it. Well, oh, thank you. It's yeah. a, it's it's it is an unfortunate shame, but it's good. But the that the government throws a bunch of stuff out there and a lot of curveballs, to be honest with you, that makes it so complicated. Kind of like the tax laws. Yeah, it, it's we don't know what to do. It's supposed to be keep it, keep it simple, stupid, the kiss principle, but it's not that way. There's so much here, and sometimes it's so convoluted, we have to have an interpreter. And yeah. I speak broken English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it sadly, it really is true. It really, I mean, it is such a big area. There's so many different mm -hmm. things, people, you know, so many different situations for different people. Uh, if you're you know, a retiree, if you're a, a VA or got TRICARE or you've got uh, you're a federal retiree or a state retiree or uh, every situation is different. So, yeah, and this yeah. neck of the woods, uh, expertise from people like you, from you specifically, is so valuable because mm -hmm. like you said, we got retired military, mm -hmm. we got active duty military with families, mm -hmm. they've got TRICARE involved, you've got, um, when they get older, they got Medicare, mm -hmm. There may be cases even with with um, injured military, disabled yeah. military, mm -hmm. yep. who are no longer active, yep. that they have special needs. Mm -hmm. Yes, they got the VA, but there are other special needs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's CHAMP VA for family members, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you can help them with all of that. Yes, you can direct yeah. them. Yeah, and they don't. You don't charge for it. No, no. What happens is the insurance. If I sign. If I help someone sign up, the insurance company pays me mm -hmm. uh, commission directly. It doesn't affect whether you go for an agent or not. And it doesn't cost you anything. No. So, uh, you know, why not take advantage of it? Don't let, don't take this burden upon yourself. <laughs> you know, you got we got Peter out here to help us and help you. So that's, that's always a good thing. What should people do? Summer months are always kind of a, an interesting thing because – people don't seem to necessarily need flu medication during the summer. They don't need a lot of uh, doctoring during the summer. They don't necessarily need the same drugs during the summertime that they may need during the wintertime, mm -hmm. unless they're on things like heart medication or some other ailment <laughs> they have that they take year round. Uh, or is there a difference in the way people need to have to look at their insurance during the summer? Well, I would just say, you yeah, know, make use of your insurance during the, uh, during the year. Uh, and, you know, uh, one of those things would be, you know, if you've got a dental plan, um, and most people do, but make use of that dental, get your teeth fixed up because mm -hmm. you've got, you've probably got a couple of thousand dollars there at a hundred percent that you can, uh, have your teeth fixed mm -hmm. or get dentures. Um, you can, uh, arranged for glasses for your eyes. Um, make sure you g get your over-the-counter benefits. And I'm speaking to myself too, because I <laughs> still haven't got my over-the-counter benefits for this first quarter. Um, and that runs out, as we know, in about four days' time. So I just I, circled that on the page. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one of my friends phoned me up and said, oh, he's just been to... Uh, to Walmart and got himself a whole load of uh, bits and pieces for his teeth and you know uh, and so, yeah, toothpaste, toothbrushes. Oh, really? Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's, uh, that's on the uh, yeah. on the Blue Cross plan. Yes, yeah. Really? That's yeah, yeah. Oh, so he tells me I haven't done it myself, so I need to do it. So you need to just either. keep your receipts uh, for stuff you buy. No, OTC? you take your card, your Blue Cross card with you, and you, you've got an over-the-counter Blue Cross card. You take that with you, and you go to the uh, checkout counter and run that as your. Well, see, uh, I didn't get card. a card, but I guess I have to go online and apply for it. Um, 
Yeah, you need to phone member services and just find out what the situation there okay. is on the federal side. I would have thought you would have an... Uh, uh, hang on. Do you have would, an over-the-counter amount on yours? I have it on the Advantage plan. But you should have an over-the-counter card. They never card, sent I would me think, one. My, yeah. Okay. So I would call them up and... Uh, and if you can't, if you don't have one, if you're not able to get one in time, then uh, order it over the phone uh, and get from the from Blue Cross over the okay. phone. So it gets Good delivered advice. to your home. You file this quarterly or something, or is it is that the way it comes in? You get a card. You you get an over the counter card, and and this is with you know. So the other companies will have one, uh, maybe as part of their actual card itself. Um, uh, like uh, uh and you basically use that card when you with with some of the other companies oh, let me just say that no. with etna you would go to cvs um the standalone cvs stores not the ones with the um with the uh is that a part of target but the standalone cvs store so you go there or you can get it on, on uh, phone them up and, and order it on over the phone mm -hmm. um with uh so that that's what you could do there with blue cross you can get it from walmart and, and other places retail stalls uh, and you've got a uh, an, a spe specific over the counter card mm -hmm. yeah so and then get relevant screenings done and for instance i need a colonoscopy and i've needed one for about four or five to Rayford, get that done. <laughs> Rayford, give him the bag. Oh, yeah. no. Here you go. Not the colonoscopy bag. We, we've got the box. All you have to do is do your thing and mail it in. That's it. Or take oh, it. You, you or send it, it to, yeah, No, you don't have to mail it. You just take this one in, I think. Yeah, take it over to the lab at the hospital. It's free. Uh -huh. oh, it's free. Okay. We save you. See, we saved you a dollar. Thank you. <laughs> not sure if I really want to say thank you. But... <laughs> and make sure you're getting your medications from the pharmacy that works out the cheapest for you too. Sure. And uh, what about you? Can get some. That's the, that's sometimes gets to be a problem, at least in my head. I can go to one pharmacy, <clears throat> get all my stuff, but I don't necessarily all the stuff is the same price. I have to shop around at different pharmacies for a certain drug at this place, a certain drug at that place, a certain drug over here. If you're really watching your money, and some of these places, you know, can be a couple of hundred dollars cheaper over the year for one drug compared to another one. Mm -hmm. Maybe Walgreens or Walmart or, you know, it just, it just depends. So what you want to do is go to medicare.gov mm -hmm. and uh, put on the fact you want to choose click on the fact you want to choose plans and then input your your zip code and the medications that you take. And it will, uh, so you put your medications in and then you pick the pharmacies you want to choose between. So I always put down a selection of, um, you know, get, getting your medications by mail because that's one option and that's normally the cheapest option. Some people don't like it, but a lot of people do. And then the other things I put in are Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. Uh, those would be the main ones. I, I may be put Rilo or yeah. another uh, company in, depending on who you get like to compare wow. against. And then you can then go and actually click on, uh, it, it'll show you all the plans, uh, and click on your plan, and then details of your plan, plan details. If you click on that and page down scroll down you'll find the cost of all the drugs for the pharma you know from each of those pharmacies that you've put in wow uh, so you can really it can really help you choose which pharmacy you should be going to and which one you shouldn't be going to okay interesting well we learn something every day uh, but I, I hate to drive around from this drugstore to that drugstore to that drugstore to that drugstore to get my monthly or my quarterly drugs yeah, so that's, you can just spend thing. spend that time doing it, uh, and that will tell you what the costs are for the next. Well, it'll get, give you monthly, also for the whole year. So you can, so you, and it's looking at it from this moment in time. So when you do it today, you'll be looking at what the next nine months of costs would. Be. You know, I could go to a supermarket around here. I go to the, <laughs> to the food store, 
And some of them will say, we will match prices. Mm -hmm. You can buy it cheaper, bring us an ad, we'll match that price somewhere yeah. else. I've seen that before. Why can't drugstores do that? Pharmacies. <laughs> match all the prices. Yeah. That's a good thought. Yeah. I don't know. Why yeah. not, Peter? I mean, you, you could ask them and see if they would, because sometimes, I mean, I don't know. I, I, go, I, go, I go to... I often ask for cheap prices, but I, I get match prices at, at various stores because I just Google it on my phone when I'm there. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, you can, instead of paying $24, I can get it for $13 from here. Will you match that? Yes. No problem. Wow. Well, you're such so, a wheeler dealer. No wonder you're award winning. You just, well, the thing is, if you, if you're making money, then you can make it go a lot further. It's like you've got given yourself a, I don't know, a 30% or 40% pay increase because right. you're buying stuff at a lower price than you otherwise would. So the way I look at it as well, I'm getting myself a pay increase. Are you by amazing. Doing it. So it, it, wow. Yeah. I like that. Maybe I'll just start yeah. doing that kind of stuff. I'll just have a whole list and say, okay, match these. Yeah. Well, yeah. well Peter, I have a real quick question for you. You had mentioned on here, um, about continuing to make sure that people continue to pay for the Medicare Part B that, you know, you met people that had lost their Part B last year and lost their Advantage plan. Why would they, I mean, do, do things automatically happen? Like I'm, I'm confused. So I, I've had several people I've come across this year and previous years that have lost their Part B because when they first got Medicare, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're 65. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they don't have social security. Several of these people haven't had social security. So Part B payments haven't been taken out of uh, social security because they're not going to get social security until they're uh, 67, 67 and a half mm -hmm. or whatever. So they've, uh, because, you know, the government then sends them a, a letter, you know, saying you need to pay something like $500 uh it's three times 170. Um, uh, you need to pay this amount by such and such a date. And they'll send you a warning letter. And then if you don't pay that, then you're going to lose your Part B. If you lose your Part B, if you don't pay that amount, um, you, uh, you then, you know, you can't keep your advantage plan either. So you get kicked out of your advantage plan because to have that advantage plan, uh, all supplement plan, you've got to have part A and and part B to be able to, to have it. Uh, so be very careful because if you get kicked out of part B, you can you have to wait until January, February, March to apply again. And then you can get your part B in March or 1st uh, of April. Um, so so make sure that you don't lose Part B because when you do, when you get it back, um, like I, I've had a couple of people, three people come to me this year, they've got it back. And two of them, uh, you know, you, when you get it back, you've got to have an advantage plan. In, you've got to choose one before that Part B goes live again. So I've got somebody who's <laughs> just got their Part B it's going to go live on the 1st of April. I was checking it up last night. So I phoned them up and said, look, I, I can see it's now, you've now had it approved. It's going to go through for the 1st of April. So I can now put this advantage plan through for you. Because you get a special election period, but that special election period is for, you've got to choose the plan before it goes live. Now I've had a couple of other people, wow. they didn't choose it before it went live. It went live on the 1st of February. And they came to see me in March, and it hadn't gone live. And reality, you're not really, you know, you're not, you're not allowed. You know, it, we were able to to make a, we were able to make a, a plan to get them signed up because it, I don't see that as being their, their. Um, it, it's they didn't know about that thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something they know, and it's, uh, yeah. But why should they be? Um, penalized for another year because I'm from the government and I'm here to help you watch yeah. out yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh but it really so losing your part b is a big thing so okay. be careful about that if you if you are not collecting social security 
and you're getting a bill from the government saying you need to pay, Better make pay. sure you pay it. And my wife has that. And we, what we've done for her is we've got it coming, we've arranged for it to come out automatically of her bank account yeah. every month. So she doesn't have to think about it. Anymore. You don't have to pay $570, yeah. $510 dollars at one time. Yeah, it's just a $174.70 each month. Okay. Yeah. And that's a better way to do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Peter, thank you. And no, you're not going away. You'll just be back on not quite as often. That's right. Are you yeah. in next week? No, well, next, actually next week. No, I'll, I'll actually, if that's okay with you, I'll miss next week. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start in so the second it's week. April 1st. Start on the first of we'll talk first, about it. first week, first Wednesday of uh, May. Okay, like a, got it. Oh, okay. okay. Will that gotcha. work? We can take that down, no problem. Yep. Yeah. Very good. I'll be Super. in church. Weather will be better. <laughs> All right. Peter, thank you, sir. As always, and we'll thank see you, you next month. Well, thank month you. after next. Okay. All right. Great. We're live in local real talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Weather is next. Freedom 97.1 WSME Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Chino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Chino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Chino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. Mohawk All Pet Protection and Warranty is the only cover protection and warranty for all pets, all accidents, all the time. Because your pets are family members too. No matter how you live, we got you covered. Soft, luxurious, smart strand for rare clean carpet. Gorgeous, durable, solid tech, luxury, vital tile. Mohawk has the ultimate floor for every room in your home that's suitable for all pets. For details, contact Watkins Floor Covering online at WatkinsNewFloor.com. Watkins Floor Covering, thanking you for voting them the best the best for 2023 in the flooring covering and carpet clean category. Lock and floor covering, they're more than just floors. It's custom showers, custom tubs, carpet cleaning, backsplashes, bathrooms, commercial, retail, and home flooring too. Lock and floor covering, family owned and operated since 1997 with locations in Jacksonville and Surf City. Lock and floor covering, you stand on it, we stand behind it. When you need comforting, who do you call? An old friend, right? Jacksonville Heating Contractors services the heating and cooling needs of our area with dependable quality train systems, guaranteeing indoor comfort for your home or business. In addition to quality train systems, Jacksonville Heating Contractors offers 24-hour emergency service, Nate certified technicians, and over 50 years of experience and service you can trust. And with a Jacksonville Heating Contractor service agreement, you never pay retail for heating or cooling services and receive priority scheduling. Remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in New Bern, you can call Trent Heating and Air Conditioning, 252-633-2200. In Moorhead City, Sea Air Heating and Cooling, 252-247-1122. If you need service or repairs, just call an old friend. Jacksonville Heating Contractors, an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. For deals on train systems and more, visit anoldfriend.com or call 910 910- 0347-2843. For 40 years now, people throughout Jacksonville and Onslow County have trusted Barnes Diamond Gallery for all their jewelry needs for every special occasion. They understand that every day is a special event for someone, whether celebrating a wedding, anniversary, birthday, engagement, or graduation. Let Barnes Diamond Gallery custom design something for you. Barnes Diamond Gallery does on-site repair in addition to their quality and selection of diamonds, diamond fashion bands, pendants, watches, earrings, gemstone rings, and necklaces for anyone for any occasion. Major credit cards accepted. Layaway available. Barnes Diamond Gallery offers appraisals and paid top market prices for gold and silver. Barnes Diamond Gallery, 461 Western Boulevard, Suite 120, Jacksonville, open 930 to 530, Monday through Friday. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. And uh, by the way, uh, before he gets completely out of here, I want to uh, talk to him real quickly about how they can reach you other than being at the kiosk uh, today, tomorrow, and Friday. If you've got some after hours, uh, you're available, right? Yes, that's right. So you could call me at 252-373-4056, or or you can find me on foxfoxplans.com. 
That's my website. So that number again is 252-373-4056. Okay. Sounds good. Peter, thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Marine forecast for you naughty nautical sailors out there. Small craft advisories in effect through tomorrow afternoon. Gale watch in effect from Thursday afternoon through Friday morning. Offshore today, winds out of the southeast, about 10 knots, pretty nice. However, the seas are still kicking up, 4 to 6. On the beach, 2 to 3. Dominant period, 13 seconds. Stay close to shore. Sounds and rivers a light chop. Tomorrow, southeasterly winds, 10 to 15 knots, becoming northerly, 25 to 30, with gust of 45. That's about 52, 53 miles per hour in the afternoon. It's going to be blustery. Seas, 4 to 6 feet, 2 to 4 near shore. Dominant period, sounds and rivers a moderate chop becoming very rough in the afternoon. Northwesterly winds on Friday, 20 to 25 knots, diminishing to 15 to 20 in the afternoon. Gusts up to 30, seas 4 to 6 feet, 2 to 3 near shore. Sounds of rivers again, rough. They will diminish into choppy in the afternoon. Today, mostly cloudy, high of 69. Tonight, showers and potentially thunderstorm, cloudy, low of 57. Tomorrow, rain, high of 61. One to two inches tonight, one to two inches tomorrow. Tomorrow night, showers likely mainly before eight. Then it will just become cloudy with a low of 42. And on Friday, though, it starts to look amazing. Sunny, high of 67. Gusty winds, but it'll be warm. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking yeah. pretty good. It's yeah. a good weekend, and the <clears throat> Easter is always a, a decent time normally to uh, begin to make plans for warmer weather, nicer days. The days are longer. Now, hopefully the March winds will be gone. Jeez. April showers, of course, coming along. Make the flowers bloom. Bring What's the April showers? Bring May flowers. That's the way it goes. Yeah, that's what they used well, to say. Wonderful. It's also cool. time to be looking very seriously about planting your gardens. Um, generally around this neck of the woods, April 15th is a good time to do it because... Uh, there's very seldom going to be any frost after April 15th. That's generally the last day. This year, we're running a week or two earlier. We're a week or two earlier as far as seasonal conditions are concerned. So, yes. you know, if you do plant something, go ahead and uh, you can plant it. And a Good Friday is always a good time. That's this Friday. That's what my parents and my grandparents always used to do. If it looks like it's going to have, and of course, Easter is a little bit early, but if it looks like it's going to have any uh, cold weather, just wrap your plants up. But it's not it's that cheap. big a deal. You know, you can throw a sheet over them. Frost is not going to be heavy or very, you know, very super cold or anything like that, unless it's a real crazy period of time. And I haven't seen one of those in a long, long time. A New York City man spent days recovering in a hospital bed after shocking video shows. This is a mom, not a man. Uh, she shows she chased a kidnapper, a suspected kidnapper, down multiple flights of stairs when he grabbed her teenage daughter from the family's doorstep back in January. The surveillance clip shows a masked man jumping over a railing and grabbing the 18-year-old girl from behind as she approached her own apartment. A moment later, her panicked mother sprinted out in pursuit. Get the F out of here, Adriana Alvarez shouted after the suspect slipping on the tile floor in the hallway before he vanished from view down the staircase. Alvarez said that her daughter, Lex, was coming back from walking their dogs on the 23rd of January when her daughter's former co-worker tried to snatch her up from behind. The mom suffered a fractured orbital bone and other injuries trying to stop the kid. Mom grabbed her daughter, trying to pull her away from the scumbag. He then strayed, uh, sprayed the mom with pepper spray, then punched her when her eyes were closed. Really? A neighbor, Gus Bugas, heard the altercation, came outside, tackled that jerk, identified as 25-year-old George Vesalu. He held him until the police arrived. Hope he got a few kicks in, a few licks in, maybe. No, that's <laughs> what I would be doing. Vesalu worked with the victim at store before management fired him for stalking the girl. According to Alvarez, she called the police on Vasilou twice before and sought a restraining order for her daughter due to his creepy behavior. Vasilou, 
six feet two inches tall, weighing about 230 pounds, a full grown man. His bond set at $50,000 for charges that include second degree attempted kidnapping, criminal possession of a weapon, assault, burglary, and more. His next court date is next Wednesday. Wow. I, I hope they put him away. It's New York. I it's don't New think York, they will. But they put him under $50,000 well, bond. I'm that, impressed with that. That in itself surprises but me. I, I has, think it should be higher. And he has not had a bond reduction. Mm -hmm. I like it. Maybe they have learned a lesson. I doubt it, but I'm hoping maybe this is well, in the right uh, direction. Well, also, the girl's not a cop. Yeah. If it had yeah. been a cop, I'd yeah, just go on about your business. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it again. Such I, is justice. Yeah. I mean, good on the mom. Yeah, oh, I would God. that guy down. Good on the neighbor. What. Yeah. Got involved. He would have more than just, he would have some injuries, <laughs> is all I'm going to say. Yeah. That was, you know, I would well, have unleashed York, my mom powers on him. It's, uh, it's New York. I couldn't do the injuries there that I can do here. Well, let me say this, too. Uh, I'm going to switch gears for a minute. We're talking about the border and people coming across the border. Yeah. Something that is just starting to gain a little traction that no one has thought of because everyone is so convinced that everyone coming across the border is Hispanic from. No. That is absolutely no. not the case. Nope. So now in California, the Romanian mafia has been illegally coming across the borders. And let me tell you what this bunch has been doing. Mm -hmm. Um they have been putting debit card scanners. These are Romanians. Um, I mean, the scam, yeah, the Romanian Romanian. mafia and they Romanian mafia doesn't play. Nope. Um, and so they have been putting the debit card skimmers on like the self checkouts at Walmarts and targets. Yep. So then what they do is they stand outside of the store and they appear to be panhandling what they're really doing. Well, yeah, they are kind of panhandling, make it look like that's what they're doing, but they actually have, a Bluetooth technology that's connected to the skimmer in the store mm -hmm. and they are stealing the numbers off those skimmers. Now, let me ask you this because mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a question I've got and it came to light yesterday because one of my cards, well, actually two of my cards, the chip did not work mm -hmm. at a store. I'm yeah. like, okay, that's okay. Uh, and I said, I'll swipe it. And the guy said, no, you've got one of those cards. You just lay it down there yeah. in front of it. Now, if that's the case, do their skimmers grab that? Can they grab the number if I just lay my card down on the screen? Yeah, I think they can. Can they? I think so. Well, that yeah. sucks. I, I'm going mean, to find out. I'm not I, sure. I'm, gonna call I'm not 100 positive about, but nothing surprises me anymore. Scammers can but do anything. Like in El Cajon, which is um, a suburb of San Diego, and it's really right on the border. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, because they can. Suspects can play. They have police have obtained a video. And they can place a skimmer over the checkout's credit card swipe in second. And they look almost exactly like the real thing. So the stores are having trouble detecting that these are fake as well. And they place it over the, the credit card machine? They, in other words, they, they are swiping out the skimmer so quick, you don't even see that they're doing it. It's that, like, very fast. And so what the police uh, are recommending tug on a credit card swipey thing before you put your card in. And if it wobbles or comes off, it's fake. Never thought about that. Y'all going to see me tugging every single thing. If you I actually go into a store. There's some, some of the stores like at a grocery store. Yeah. That's always wobbly. And and I'm telling crazy. You, think about what you're going to do. Now, and this, it's this, been like that for years. Ship? Yeah. Like, you know, the little thing, thing you, you put slide your it card into, in. But, so okay. if you tug on it first, tug the little Thing you put your card in. Can you? I did not know you could. The slot. The slot. I the did not slot know you thing. could grab that slot. Well, you can. Okay. That's how. That's how they're. That's how they're. I can scamming. see you getting arrested for. I'll be tugging. Y'all just about to watch me tug. Yeah. So. Well, I will. I mean, we got to have somebody in scary. here. We we'll get somebody in here from one of the guys that California arrested. His name is Floyd, and I'm not even going to attempt yeah, to pronounce this guy's last name. He's one of Romania's most wanted criminals. They have photographs. So he um, he that, paid for an Audi with stolen funds. He was parked in a handicapped spot. Yes, that's him. Okay. And if you look in the picture, that see those credit cards on the left? Those are all de cloned debit cards. Really? That he had, that the police seized during his arrest. And those are from people's cards. Um, and they make these cards very, very quickly. If you've ever watched that that comedy, Identity Theft, it, it really high. I mean, even though it was a comedy, it actually highlights how easy and scary this is to oh. do. 
But this guy has, what would you say, 20 cards here? I mean, uh, that's like least, a lot. Probably 25. Um, and so in, in California, they're busting a lot of suspects, and uh, almost all that they've had so far have had um, ties to organized crime in Romania. Well, I, 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 and they're coming it, across the border. They're, that's getting, they're them, getting in. They're nailing them. Yeah. But what are they going to do with them? I say they send them back, but who knows? I they'll mean, just you know how that more, goes. They'll just do more and send somebody else over with the cards. Now, look, if you look right here, so if you look at this video, Rayford, they're showing. So this is a fake skimmy thing, and it just fits over top of the actual credit card machine. And it looks so real. Well, so is that in the that's for the slide, though. Yeah, that's the slidey thing. Or the, but in the bottom would be where you would put it. Slidey thing. Yeah. So if where the lady's hand's blocking where you would put the chip card in right. if you don't swipe. Can you grab that little chip? This thing? whole thing fits over that. I so will be checking that out today. I'm telling you, I'm going to check it. And, and if you go online, they're showing you. Fox News has this thing, and they've got the photos. They're showing um, of the fake scam thing looks absolutely it just literally fits over top mm -hmm. of the actual stores scam um swipe card thing huh. this is scary and just this is y'all want to know why I shop online right here this is why um and just alone i mean they can oh they can target ebt card card users too oh great and they have drained accounts them in california the moment the state releases a person's food stamp Caught, you know, the amount they get a money money reloaded every month. You're making nine million dollars a month. This is awful. Okay. This is absolutely here. And these are people, once again, coming across our border legally. Like yep. we've been saying all along, all these people are not coming from Central and South America. These people are coming from Rom Romania. Yeah. Okay, we've got a caller. Good morning. Who's this? Uh, good morning again, everybody. Hey, Chris. I'm going to chime in on this uh, card, debit card, credit yes. card, scanning, mm -hmm. and uh, grocery stores, et cetera, stores. So there's a thing called an RFID yes. card that you can um, have in your wallet. That's one of the ways to prevent uh, these scammers from doing this is to use that card, and it blocks it. The other thing I was uh, learned from um, one of the credit unions here in town, and I know people don't like to use their credit card versus a debit, but you're safer using you your are. credit card. Mm -hmm. yep. um, as everybody knows, when you use your debit, that's automatic money out of your account. Mm -hmm. Now, the the let me ask card. you a question. Quite often, uh, yeah. debit cards can be used as a as a credit card. You can yeah. just sign instead of putting in your code. Do, are they protected then as a credit card or not? Um, no, because if you look at your debit card, it'll say debit on it. Yes. And then your credit card versus that. And I'm not sure, um, Ray, for the, you know, as far as uh, institutional banks versus a credit union, I'm sure they're pretty, pretty close um, other than being a um, But the, uh, I think, I think when you, because um, sometimes I'll use a debit card when it's like, Five dollars or something. And, sure. and someone last night at a church meeting I was at said, oh, "Nobody cares cash anymore." I do. Pretty much, not yeah. many. But I'm, I'm old fashioned. A um, but uh, so you still have to sign sometimes, especially for medications. And when you put your debit card in, you they sure. have access automatically to your money if they're a scammer. And Kelly's right; they're all over the place, and mm -hmm. they're not just coming from South American borders. Mm -hmm. We all know that, um, and hopefully that'll change uh, January 20 of next year. <laughs> but this RFID card, and I wish I could tell you the price of it, but it prevents that from happening. Okay. From what I would have um, researched. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to First Citizens Bank. That's where we have our account here for live and local. Mm -hmm. Um, I called one day after I was just looking over the thing and I said, I don't, I don't do business with this particular company or this particular company or this particular company. <laughs> and so I called and, uh, their, uh, business department got on the line and he says, hey, this looks kind of strange to me too. And $1,293 later that we got mm -hmm. put back into the account, they found all Good of the job, fraud. Mm -hmm. They found it. I, they found more than I knew about. Good job. Yeah, they're very good when you get them. But that's mm -hmm. the other thing. If I could make a, mention it real quick, I know you're short on time and you got to do some, uh, pay some bills. Yep. 
Uh, but these people now have gotten so sophisticated, they can actually spoof your um, bank, credit union, whatever banking institution you use. They can spoof um, their fraud department phone numbers. Yeah. And they will come across and, you know, you'll think, and God bless the elder elder people than, um, than the four of us talking right now. They get taken advantage of, and, no. it, and it comes up and it looks exactly like, and I'm, you know, shout out to your bank, First Citizens. It looks like they're a fraud department, and it's not. Yep. So if you get a call from somebody that doesn't really speak fluent English, as we do. They're wrong. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> they're, they're spoofing you. They spoof the number. They're getting ready to scam you. And the other thing, and I'll, I'll leave on this note. Most people of us know you cannot take thirty thousand dollars. You can't take ten thousand. You can max probably seven hundred uh, from a teller two machine. Yep. When they ask you for more than that, they're scamming you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if they come up with a six hundred and ninety nine dollar ninety nine cents uh, amount to, they're also scamming you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sure. Just say yeah. no. I'll just hang up, and after you can utter some profane words if you choose, that's your choice. And then. Yep. Uh, Talk to them. Talk to them about their mama. <laughs> I always get some. And I would say go to your bank in person. Oh, I do that too. Yeah, go in there in person if if you are really concerned about go. being aligned with somebody. Just but, go. I mean, and the other thing I yeah. asked when all these individuals called to offer me yada yada yada, I said and they said what's your birthday? And I said no, you tell me what my birthday is, and I'll see if I agree. Yeah, that gets them every time. Every I've tried that before. Time. They got for, frustrated. If you don't, if you don't know the last four of my social, and you're you ain't gonna now, get it. You ain't gonna get it. There you go. So those are the those are my two choice okay, chances. All right. And, some of us old fogies, we know better. Well, Rayford, let me bring up something real quick before we go to break on this same subject. Um, so this guy's criminal empire in California, they even busted now. This is just makes me mad. A 14-year-old suspect in this ring. Yeah. He was captured driving, now, four, now remember I said 14, <laughs> not even old enough to have a driver's license, a $250,000 sports car and wearing a Rolex mm -hmm. at 14. Um, luckily, you ask about that guy. So he was convicted in January of this year. He is actually supposed to be sentenced later this week. To 30 years in federal prison. Not enough. Which is sad because that means now this man who's not even a U.S. citizen is going to spend 30 years in federal prison. Yay on that. But guess what? Taxpayers are going to have to house this idiot. But I guess if we release him, he would just come right back across yes, the border. Would. So, I mean, we have to figure out which is better for us. I think we should put him to work on a bridge. You're live in local real talk on <laughs> Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Freedom 97.1. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane & Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane & Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. Hello shoppers, take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store, down home, down the street where good things cost less, Main Street and downtown Maysville, Whole Fresh Picnic, just $1.29 a pound, Bone-In New York Strip Steak, $8.99 a pound, Half Cut Bone Strip Loin, $7.99 a pound, Half Cut Boneless Strip Loin, $7.99 a pound, Family Pack Cube Beef Steak, just $5.79 a pound, Pork spare ribs, $1.99 a pound. Whole bottom round, $3.99 a pound. Chicken thighs or drumsticks, $1.19 a pound. White, red, or black seedless grapes, $2.99 a pound. One pound package fresh strawberries, only $2.99. Green snap beans, $1.99 a pound. A five pound bag of russet potatoes, $2.99. Large California navel oranges, only 99 cents each. And two two-liter size Coca Sprite for five dollars. That's your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Main Street, Maysville. 
Remember, say big with the pig. Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro reminds you to check your mailbox and find your quote on homeowner's insurance. Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro goes the extra mile to make sure you're in good hands, like helping you customize your home and windstorm coverage with their write your own home policy. Yes, save even more when you bundle your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, and even your golf cart. Remember, if it rolls or floats, call Tammy for a quote. You and everything you own are in good hands with Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro. Call today, 910-326-5383. Timmy Fry Allstate, 638 West Corbett Avenue in the friendly city by the sea, Swansboro. Check your mailbox today for savings on your homeowner's insurance. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsil Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. If you plan to rebuild, remodel, repair, or do cottage or home improvements, Williams Hardware, 311B Bridge Street, Morris City, should be your first stop. Williams Hardware carries power tools and equipment, chains and fasteners, plumbing and supplies along with Gerber, Buck, and Case Knives. Williams Hardware is your helpful handy hardware store. Williams Hardware cuts glass to size and cuts and threads pipe. When the chores are done and the cleanup is finished, light up that Wilmington Grill from Williams Hardware. Williams Hardware, 3011B Bridge Street, Morgan City, open Monday through Sunday from 7.30 to 6 p.m. and Sundays for your convenience, noon till 5. Phone Williams 26-7158. The best deal for the grill is at Jones LP Gas and Oil Company each Friday. Every Friday from 8 a.m. till closing at 5, Jones LP Gas and Oil Company will fill your 20-pound LP gas grill cylinder for only $11. You heard that right. Each Friday till closing, you can have your 20-pound LP gas cylinder filled for only $11 at Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881 Wilmington Highway in the heart of Verona. In addition to saving money on your LP gas for the grill, Jones Gas and Oil is your full-service gas and oil company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural gas and oil needs, as well as gas appliances, LP replacement parts, fill cylinders, and inkless water heaters, and they offer a 10% military discount on installation. Remember to get that cylinder filled every Friday until closing for only $11. Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881, the Old Wilmington Highway, Verona, phone 910-346-6384. If your plans include hitting the road this year to do some traveling, make sure a visit to Silent Service Center is on your to-do list. Travel safety starts with the tires on your vehicle, and a visit to Silent Service Center will give you peace of mind with the best value in all neighboring tires and the largest selection of used tires in this area. In addition to quality tires, Silent Service Center is a North Carolina inspection station and does complete brake service, oil changes, and alignment service. Silent Service Center, 1707 Lejeune Boulevard, Jacksonville, and 108 West Main Street, Hadlock. Phone 910. 353 It's live and local. We're hot. Real we're talk hot. on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Yeah, I said we're hot before. Well, I had the mic run turned up. Sorry about that, y'all. Anyway, we're here. Hot means the mics are hot. Not yeah, we are hot. Don't talk. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I, was, I was supposed to shut up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, um, you ever had gator gumbo? No. No. Well, it's made, it's got tomatoes in it and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Got all that sort of good stuff. A South Carolina alligator was found with a strange object on his head, and wildlife experts in Georgia were called in to get to the bottom of it. What? The University of Georgia Coastal Ecology Lab made a Facebook post about the 11 foot long gator, which had been named King Arthur on Monday. The lab explained that it was recently contacted about a dominant male ga alligator, that means sort of aggressive wearing an unusual contraption at Fripp Island Golf and Beach Resort at St. Helena Island, South Carolina. Okay, get there. After talking with them and looking at the pictures they sent, it appeared that this alligator had somehow gotten a tomato cage stuck over its head. 
Oh, oh my. <laughs> They're calling him King Arthur. Mm-hmm. Well, did they get it all? <laughs> I guess they did. I don't know. It well, seemed like his ability it? to eat might be impacted, but yes. after two days, he was able to break part of the cage and free his head. However, it was still attached fairly tightly around the neck. After a few days, the Georgia researchers decided to take matters into their own hands with help from the resort's head naturalist. Mm -hmm. Since it did not seem like he would be able to get the cage off himself and things were getting caught on it, we were worried that he would get stuck on something underwater and drown if he could not get free. For those reasons, we decided human intervention was necessary. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I wonder who was going to do that. Would you want to tackle a little bit? They got some gator angler, I'm sure. Not After traveling up the Palmetto State and capturing the reptile, experts were able to remove the tomato cage from its head. It proved to be difficult as the cage was located where a gator would usually be snared. <laughs> However, after several tries, they were able to capture the 11-foot, 2-inch male and safely remove the tomato cage. How in the name of heaven did he find the tomato cage? I was thinking that. How did he find it? Where did he? I was just sitting here thinking that while you're reading that story. Where did the cage come from? It was in somebody's garden getting a snack. (laughs) Tomatoes. Tomato snack. This time of year, are people even using cages yet? Not really. I well, think that, so. that would be well, South Georgia. Who yeah, knows? But, I mean, South I pick, Carolina. I pick mine up and storm for the winter. But I wonder if somebody like, dumped it. You know what I mean? Just throwing trash. Hey, somebody might have left them out all year Awful long, humans. just like they do with Christmas lights. Yeah. I haven't mentioned anything soft. about our president today, have I? Have I used his name at all? Who? No, you have not. I don't think. Um, Mr. Biden. Maybe who? You, did he? <laughs> who? I don't know. Did you did say it? Did not. I have not said it. Just go ahead and do it. I know you need to. I got to Tell it. Sorry, y'all. Yesterday, Mr. Biden talking about the collapse of the bridge. He said he had been traveling over that bridge many times by rail car on a train. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are no tracks on that bridge. Y'all make him stop. I did not do it. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Biden. Somebody make him stop telling tall tales. Y'all need to. He didn't get his nap yesterday. Y'all need to get control over this. Uh, it's, It's a shame that you allow him to do this. I'm sorry. It's, it, it is his fault, but it's not his fault. You all have put fault. him into this yeah. position and you're not taking care of it. And that is senior abuse, elder abuse, whatever you want to call it. You should go to jail. Yeah. Right? I mean, and why are they thought. just letting him run around unfiltered like that? It's, you know, well, he's the president is. of the United States. I guess sometimes it's hard just to say, be quiet, sit down, and don't talk. <laughs> Well, See, I would about, say that no matter what. I mean, I was one of his workers. Oh, yeah. I would say that that would be my job. Well, look how many of his staff have quit where they just, they They're never probably know what's going to well, He's going to say frustrated. when he's, you know, they are frustrated. telling yeah. him to follow his prompter. Uh, work. No, he, he, you know, that'd be like telling me to behave, right? That's mm-hmm. like telling Trump not to say what he says. Yeah, that's unfiltered. He's another one needs to be weighing in. <laughs> yes, he does. Here nor there. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Okay, we'll okay. talk about it tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow we got, uh, oh, God, I got to be on my best behavior tomorrow, don't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mind your P's and Q's. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the sheriff is going to be in here. He is. The sheriff, Chris Thomas. We're yep. looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Timmy, you may as well get ready because, you know, your cousin's going to be coming in. So you may as well get ready to ring us up and talk. You can call us up and tell us some fun things about him if you would like. Oh, I dare you. I don't want that I, I, yeah, I dare you, Timmy. Secrets. <laughs> Have a great rest you of your day. Coming anybody. up next is uh, Fox News Break. At yes. 10 o'clock this morning, it's Rick Dees with uh, another day's dose of the Daily Dees. And at 3 o'clock this afternoon, Chris is going to say, hey, uh, Hollywood, it's your turn. Have a good day. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m. Don't be asking me. You are live in local. Or what's that show? We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> WSME, Camp Lejeune, W246CJ, Jacksonville.